spoilers for FX's Shogun, the book, the It series, and the actual history are forthcoming in this piece. This video will cover what could happen in the next episodes, so if you want to go into them completely unprepared, I'm giving you that warning now. That part is now out of the way, alright. Episode 8 of Shogun has a new trailer, and while I performed a comprehensive analysis of it, there was one scene that I thought needed extra attention and discussion. These brief moments happened at the very conclusion of the trailer. Mariko seemed to be about to play a pivotal role in Toronaga's planned development as they closed their talk in a very foreboding manner. However, what might that be in particular? Now that we have that out of the way, let's go into the film and talk about the scene, offering our various interpretations and speculations. My question is, what then? It seemed like the entire trailer was building up to Toronaga's journey to Osaka as its central topic. We have no idea if he is going to be fighting solo, or if he is in the company of his brother Siki Nobitatsu, who would be more accurately classified as a prisoner. There are many theories floating about, but one that appears to be holding water is that Toronaga may be using his brother as a Trojan horse by consenting to travel to Osaka while pretending to be a prisoner. However, once there, the true motives could be exposed, leading to the occurrence of Crimson Sky and an assault on Osaka Castle. Look at the great warlord, the cunning master of deceit, as John Blackthorne put it while describing Toronaga. Therefore, I believe that Blackthorn is aware of a separate strategy at work here. Blackthorn is perhaps Toronaga's most loyal ally after all. Crimson Sky is bound to happen in my opinion. Osaka Castle will be under siege and will need to do something to defend its gates, as that word appears in the title of Episode 9. Here is when the scene from the Episode 8 trailer becomes relevant and raises questions. Toronaga then asked Mariko, Are you prepared to do your part? Mariko said nothing but her expression betrayed her knowledge of her responsibilities and the terror in her eyes. Her shoulders appeared to be burdened with an enormous amount of responsibility. Their conversation takes place before the one we witnessed between Blackthorn and Mariko, in which she refused to listen to his advice and went to Osaka nonetheless, claiming that her loyalty prevented her from doing anything else. Going to Osaka appears to be her necessary action, which Toronaga is inquiring about. Since her father betrayed the daimyo and was punished by commander to kill all of her family members and then perform seppuku, Mariko has desired to die for an endless number of years. But since he made sure that Mariko was wed to Toto Buntaro, she was technically Buntaro's, as it had been stated in an earlier episode that a woman belonged to her husband. Because of this, she might avoid punishment similar to that meted out to her relatives as she was no longer closely linked to her father. Nevertheless, she has always wished to perform seppuku in order to escape the weight of existence. People in her immediate vicinity, including Buntaro and Toronaga, forbid her from doing it. Here is where I think Toronaga will strike a bargain with Mariko. I suppose he's intending to use Mariko to get control of Osaka Castle, as he knows she wants to end things for herself and is adept with a sword, as we saw in the flashback from a few episodes before she married Tota Buntaro. In my opinion, he will force her into a precarious situation so that she can fight to the death, which will provide her the opportunity to achieve her goal. The historical figure on whom Mariko is based, Tamako, had already passed away at this point in time. After Ishida captured Osaka Castle and kidnapped numerous members of the regents and generals' families, she passed away, who killed her a family retainer or a woman who committed suicide because she refused to be held captive is a mystery. Legend has it that her servant should assassinate her if she ever finds herself in peril. It follows that we can't use the actual past to guide the course of the performance. But something comparable did happen in earlier versions of Shogun, so there is a possible resource we can consult. Lord Yoshitoranaga's orders for Mariko to go to Osaka are shaping up to be a major plot point with far-reaching effects for the show's characters. Mariko comes in Osaka for the fight of her life in Episode 9 and in the wake of a terrible death is the statement that appears in episode 10's description. My gut tells me that Mariko's trip to Osaka will end in murder because of this. There were rumblings that the showrunners might stay true to the original material and not kill off Mariko, but it appears like Mariko will meet her demise when she gets there. During Mariko's earlier visits to Osaka, she and Blackthorn had a mission to free hostages held by Lady Achiba and Ishidor. The goal was to gain their favor so that Toronaga could form an alliance with them and bolster his army. Ninjas showed up just as they were about to capture Blackthorn and the prisoners, thus Mariko had to sacrifice herself so that they could escape. I feel a mix of emotions about this. Obviously, it's tragic she passed away, and we've become emotionally invested in this miracle, but it's also ironic because she always wanted to escape this world. 
The title of the upcoming episode comes from her perspective that her life is the abyss. Thus, she left behind an enduring legacy since she died and sacrificed herself so that good may triumph over evil, while simultaneously allowing her to play a crucial role for John Torinaga. In my opinion, this is what will happen in the show's last episodes. The scene in question, which is the center of attention in the episode 8 trailer, will be mentioned for the first time in those episodes. It will likely outline Torinaga's plan for her, the plan that will lead to Mariko's death. I believe this is Torinaga's method of letting her die, but in a way she didn't anticipate, since he knows she doesn't want to be around anymore, she begged him to let her carry out seppuku in the previous episode. Since she is kept safe from harm due to her role as a translator between Blackthorn and himself, I think he is aware that she is going to die when he sends her to Osaka. Normally, he wouldn't put her in risk. Therefore, it seems like a decision he normally makes, though with a minor twist. I feel like this scene represents the beginning of the end, out of all the moments in the brief 23-second clip, and that's saying something. The real-life death of Tamako tipped the scales in favor of Iyasu Tokugawa. I fear that Mariko Ishidor and Toronaga will follow in the footsteps of those who turned against Ishida Matsunari after her death. Consequently, the impending conflict and Ishidor's possible loss of allies are major factors in the importance of this plan's implementation and the laying of its foundations. The eighth episode is almost here, only a few more days until its release. You now know what this moment from the Shogun 8 teaser means. Press the card in the upper right corner to access more videos on Shogun. From the very first episode onwards, I will be covering every single one of the show's episodes. I've also been exploring the historical personalities that inspired the characters. If you're interested in learning more about them, you can find a whole playlist on the channel. Do you have a prediction for what happens in episode 8? In a way, won't it signal the end of the world? Post a comment telling me what you think.